Hey, good morning, everyone. Here are some upcoming announcements and events. The scriptures of the week are 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 16 through 21, and 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 16. We are now offering three different options for you to join us this Sunday. The first option is our drive-up service. The second one is sitting in the sanctuary. You'll need to wear a mask and your temperature will be checked. And option number three is that services will be on Facebook each Sunday morning and on our website. We can't wait to see you online, in person, or in your vehicle at church. The tech team is sponsoring a drive-up movie night happening Friday, November 13th at 7 p.m. The family-friendly film will be breakthrough and the movie will be free. Light refreshments will be provided. Here's another quick reminder that our women's ministry walk and Tai Chi class has been postponed until further notice. Looking for ways to serve? Our Thanksgiving basket drive is happening November 21st and Operation Christmas Child shoe boxes are available now. During this time, there are several ways for you to continue to worship the Lord with your giving. You can download the Givelify app and locate Turning Point Church, or you can visit tpcglobal.org forward slash giving. If you have not been getting the TPC newsletters or have not been contacted by a member of our pastoral care team, please give the church office a call. We'd love to hear from you. American spirit. Work hard and overcome all obstacles and do it yourself. DIY is only a television show, folks. Okay? You can't do it by yourself. You cannot defeat the words of the enemy on your own. As a matter of fact, you cannot defeat him at all. Jesus already took care of that. See, Satan has great power to work against us, and he does. In his realm. Amen? Amen. If you do not feel as though he's working against you, if you don't feel as though he's working against you, but then he's doing a really good job of deceiving you. If you follow Christ, you will be attacked. But that is not what the issue is. The issue is how will you respond to the attacks? Even though we cannot defeat Satan on our own, does not mean that we surrender the fight. Remember we talk about this fight is done on your knees. Done with the word, wielding the sword and all that good stuff. That's exactly exactly what we supposed to continue to do. The scripture that we read today tell, tells us that to love God means to obey his commands. When we get outside of that realm is when we get into trouble, don't we? <laughs> we are to live holy lives as we do. We'll be tempted and Satan will try to destroy you. Did you get that? We are to live holy. The word said be holy because I'm holy. <clears throat> and when Satan see you make that attempt to live holy, then the avalanches come in. We must wage war against him. How many of you, and don't raise your hands, get up daily and put on your whole arm and say, I'm coming at you, devil. We got to wage war against him because he sure is waging war against you. He is the enemy of your soul. As a follower of Jesus, we have a supernatural way to defeat Satan. You see, you got to understand this, folks. We do not fight for victory. We fight from victory. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In verse 4, it says, this is the victory that has overcome the world. So what that tells you, we're coming from a position of strength, not a position of weakness. But oftentimes, his lies and his accusations get the better of us. 
I'm here to remind you today, we're not fighting for victory. We're fighting from victory. We know the battle has already been done. Christ is the victor. He defeated death, hell, and the grave, and every bit of what Satan brought down here with him. See, in verse 4, 4, 7, 4, 4, you dear children are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. What a relief that should be for us. Greater is he that's in each and every one of us than anything that's in the world. Mm. There is joy and solace in that, isn't there? We do not have to fight for victory. Victory already belongs to Jesus. And by association with us. I love that song. Victory belongs to Jesus. Mm -mm -mm. First Colossians 2, 14 and 15 says the following. Having canceled the written code with its regulations, that was against us and that stood opposed to us, he took it away, nailing it to the cross and having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. Isn't that good news? See folks, let's get down and dirty here for a minute. The Holy Spirit brings a spirit of life into every situation that the Adamic death brought into the world. Everybody know what I mean by the Adamic death, right? See, when the first family fell, death came to us. That separation from God. Y'all with me? Okay. Part of the diversity of the Spirit is victory in all that we bring into his presence. Amen? One of the things that I want to hit on today, because I see too much of it happening in the body, and I'm going to be very brief, is victory in the gift of healing. You see, it's the victory of the spirit that revives dead bodies, objects, situations, and circumstances. See, Jesus had to remind Lazarus' sister that he is the embodiment of the resurrection power and the life of this world. He had to remind them, even though they see in their current reality, body started to decay, started to stand, but he reversed all of that. The blood started to flow again. And blood is a life-giving fluid in us today. Yeah. And I'm here to tell you supernaturally the blood of Jesus is that same life-giving fluid that covers us today. Today I want to proclaim victory in the area of healing folks. Is that okay? Yeah. I want to command that anything in your body that the world is saying is past redemption is quickened today in Jesus' name. Amen. Throughout the Bible, we can see that the blood of Jesus was instrumental to the turning around of impossible health situations. Can anybody bear witness with that? See, the blood of Jesus can raise the dead as evidenced by the widow of Nain, who was revived by his same, but her son was revived by that same power. See, the blood of Jesus is available to make the lame walk in Acts 3, 1 and 10, where we see the situation with a fellow that was hanging out by the gate called Beautiful. Oh. Mm. I was touched by the blood of Jesus by Peter and John. Remember that? 
see the blood of Jesus can heal internal organs because in Luke 8 43 to 47 we see a woman with fibrosis who had been bleeding continuously for 12 years but was healed at an instant by the touch of his garment. The blood of Jesus can heal the mind in Luke 8 26 to 33 when a demon possessed man was brought back to sanity. The blood of Jesus can heal skin diseases in Luke 5, 12, and 13 when a leprous man was miraculously healed. And the blood flowed in the Old Testament as well because Naaman, uh, the general, he got healed by the blood when he dipped into the river seven times. Hallelujah. Remember, try you and God. It's with the beginning all the way to the present. Amen. The blood of Jesus does not discriminate by the day or time. In Matthew 8, 16 and 17, people were brought before Jesus at night and he healed them. A withered hand was restored on the Sabbath in Matthew 12, 9 through 13. The blood of Jesus is going to be demonstrated in your body right now as you pray the following prayers, my saints. I want you to focus right now. I don't care what part of the body it is, even if somebody you're interceding for. I want you to lay your hands in that place right now and let the blood of Jesus heal you. Say, oh Lord Jesus, let your blood heal me today. Let your blood flow over me today. Whatever this is, is not up to you. I command every hour of sickness fire into my body Come out now by the blood of Jesus. Let me hear you say that. I command every hour of sickness fire into my body. Come out now by the blood of Jesus. I command every laying testimony afflicting any destiny to walk now by the blood of Jesus. Any destiny that we have. Any affliction, every accusation is defeated now by the blood of the Lamb. Victory ah, belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Jesus. And as we celebrate communion today, we have the opportunity to celebrate and be reminded of that victory that has already been won for us. But before, 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 before we come to the throne, before we come to the presence to take part in this celebration, you got to do one thing, folks. You got to repent. You got to repent. If there's any, anything that you're holding against a brother and a sister right now, you need to release that in the name of Jesus. Doesn't matter how soon it was or how long ago it was. You got to release it. You got to release it. If there's any sin of commission or omission, even stuff you may not think of, Let's plead the blood of the Lamb over that right now and ask for forgiveness. Let's repent right now. See, the bread and the cup are symbols of the victory that Jesus has already won. He wants to have you partake of that victory. Do you recognize that victory today, saints? Do you hold tight to that truth and hope? Do you recognize that Jesus is the victory? If you make those declarations and all hearts and minds are right, will you join me now as we proclaim the Lord's death by taking communion? Does it take some time to
to, to fight with this plastic like I'm doing right now. <laughs> Let's just meditate on the word that we read today. Let's meditate on chapter 4 again. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Mm -hmm. That is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. See, we walk by faith, not by sight. Amen? And sometimes it's a measure of our faith, even though we declare victory of whether that victory was won or not. Y'all understand that? Sometimes we allow unbelief to creep in into a victory that has already been won. Yes. Come on. Come on. Spirit of God is speaking to us today as we prepare to remember the hero of the ages. Oh, yes. If everybody got your sacraments ready, we stand in the, in the center and could you toot your horn if you're ready out there at the driver? Hallelujah. Mm. You know, I'm not going to go into this, this much this morning, but I want you to realize something that I shared with some of the brothers. The bread, Jesus blessed it before he administered it to his disciples. The cup of wine that represented his blood, he gave thanks for it. <laughs> he started that interceding process right there in the upper room. Y'all catch that? He blessed the bread as it's custom to do. Yes. But in those days when somebody tells you shalom, it's administering a blessing to you. But he gave thanks for what represented the blood that washes us all. The blood that we pretty pleaded today over healing in our bodies, healing in our soul. I want you to understand that. So that evening he took the bread. And after he had blessed it, he said, This bread is broken for you and for many. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised. For our iniquity, by his stripes, like Minister Ron said, those stripes that was bare, open to see the purity of what transpired on the cross. And he said, whenever you eat of this bread, you do so in remembrance of me. Let's eat together. Folks, it's all about the blood. It's all about the blood. Likewise, he took that cup of wine. And after, thank you, Yahweh, Elohim, El Shaddai. Thank you, God. For what I'm about to do, which is going to save mm -hmm. the sins of the world. Mm -hmm. And he gave thanks. And he said, This represents the blood which shall be shed for you and for many. Whenever you drink of this cup, always you must do so in remembrance of me. This is the blood that could not be replicated by bulls and goats. 
This is the blood that's applied in the Holy of Holies right now. And it's the blood that has all power and dominion over sin, death, hell, and the grave. Let us drink together. Holy Father, we thank you. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the deed you did on the cross. It was just not a deed. It was the only means of redeeming us back to the Father. We thank you, Lord, that we are indeed redeemed. So let the redeemed of the Lord say so this morning. Hallelujah. We thank you for this time of koinonia, our fellowship. We enter into this place by consuming the symbols of our hero of the ages and the ability for us to have life and have it more abundantly. The blood that Jesus